Hi folks, welcome to another video from K1LBG, my call sign for ham radio. Thanks for checking in. This is going to be a little different. Uh, this is a little machining that I'm going to try to do today. Uh, I have the light tower trailer all torn apart, getting ready to sand and paint. So we'll get back to that Lister engine and the light tower in the next episode or so. But this morning, I thought I'd uh, try to repair something that there's no parts available for. So let me show you. So today is making a valve, a throttle valve, for one of my impact wrenches. What's interesting is this is a Chicago pneumatic wrench. This is also a Chicago pneumatic wrench, I believe. I mean, it's it looks the same. This is this is Chicago pneumatic. Certainly, this really looks identical to it. But it's a it's a different. It's a Mohawk. Now I could probably take it apart and uh, find all the pieces being the same. Certainly, the valve that I'm looking at is the same. And this is also, lo and behold, Chicago pneumatic. You see the CP on it. But it says Craftsman, and it has a part number. And then, of course, what I found out looking online is the first part of the number, the 786 dot something, that shows the original equipment manufacturer, and it lists in various places that, in fact, that's Chicago pneumatic. The problem is that this guy is just slightly different than the other two. The other two have a throttle on them here and just an on-off valve you might say um, that goes that goes in here on off and that's what these are these are these are the pieces that go into here and this is the valve a little valve that fits like that and the reason I'm saying that these are really the same is because all the little pieces are the same. So the Mohawk and Chicago pneumatic, the pieces, these pieces and probably the insides are all interchangeable. I'm guessing this piece up here is more like this, but this doesn't have it. But that's okay. Um, I mean, the the port's in the same place here. Uh, the pieces in front are all the same. So my problem is that this Chicago pneumatic actually has a little screw and a graduation here for how far to push in the trigger. So the throttle is built into this single valve. Well, this was the stem for that. And you notice everything's missing off of it. So I'm going to try to make a piece for the end of that. I have these on backwards. These, actually, these, I have these on backwards. These fit in here. Like, well, sort of like so. Without my glasses and only one-handed, it's becoming difficult. They go like that, and they fit right inside here. What I think this should be, from what I could tell, it almost looked like it was a piece of leather that rotted away. But I'm going to try to make something similar, but with a much longer taper, so that as this gets pushed out, you get more and more air in it. So it may not, it's not going to have an O-ring. These each have an O-ring on them to seal them up. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that. I, if I get down to just a hiss, I'll be happy. Um, so that's that's what's going to get built today. Is it's going to be a little lathe work to turn probably a piece of brass. So I'm going to set you up on the K1 
camera mount and uh, start taking some measurements. So this is the piece that it went this way actually. The trigger pushes against this and opens up this cone that goes here I would say. Uh, so what I have to do first is to see how far in take and unscrew this all the way that's about it and see how far how much travel I have there and it is not much it's maybe a quarter of an inch. We'll figure that out in a second. So if I look at This piece here, wow, that's almost exactly one inch. Call it one inch. And that goes to 780. So that's pretty close to quarter of an inch travel that I have in that. So what I need to do is make a taper. So there are a couple of dimensions that are critical. I need to make a taper. I know that. And I know I have a quarter of an inch to go here. Now on top of that, this piece here has to have a little stub on it. to fit inside the spring because that's going to have to go like that and this is going to need a little hole inside for this pin to go in so the big question is This, this should be as small as I can make it, I guess, to get it pretty close to that. And the other end should be probably just a little bigger than that size. So the easiest thing to do is to... Take a drill set Ooh, boy that's what a guess that was and that is nine thirty seconds still goes through so Well, it's five sixteenths. So I think that should be about five sixteenths, the width. And I don't know what these are. These are 380, 378, 
So, 5 16 378. Pretty, pretty close, I believe. So we'll, we'll take that measurement. Call that 5 16 So I have to find a piece of brass stock that's at least 5 16 and then start carving this up. So that's where we're going next. Okay, we're switching from fractional to decimal. So this, this spring, we have to go about 730 seconds. So 730 seconds, I'm going to use my trusty drill gauge. 730 seconds is 218. So if I make this 0.218 or so, and then 5 sixteenths, of course, is 3, 3, 1, 2, huh? Point three one two and a quarter inches, 0.25, we know that. And this is also going to see if I got you in here. So we're going to make this a half inch overall, quarter there and a quarter there to start. 0.218 for this pin, 0.312, which is the 5 16 for the outside, and then we'll go down to whatever we can, which will be uh, no less than 125. Probably should do like. One no one twenty five and then the hole will be point one two five as well. It's an eighth inch hole, eighth inch pin. So that's what we're going to do. We have this huge chunk of brass and I'm going to try to make this piece without cutting this up too much. I don't want to cut an extra half inch just to waste it to hold it in the in the lay. That may end up having to do that but let's see what happens. Well it uh, it barely fits in this south bend. I don't have to worry about the long tip rattling too much. It does just fine. So now the first thing is, I'm going to clean up this end. So this piece, 3 quarter inch, i got to get down to 5 sixteenths for a half inch of it. So I'm going to Bring everything in as close as I can. I have room there. And I'll... I'm going to do some trimming, I guess. Get down to 
312. Well, maybe we'll make it about 340. Got a ways to go, and a half inch. Now, mind you, for the time that I have into this, if you considered my labor, probably even at $10 an hour, it would be cheaper to just go replace that. But this is, uh, this is how I keep my brain stimulated. I still got quite a ways to go. I'm not going to measure yet. Four eighty. Four eighty to three thirty. One fifty. Wow, that's a lot. All right, 380, need to be at 330, it's 50 thousandths. So I can take 25 thousandths on here, total. This, because this is an old style one, it actually reads how much you're pushing in, not how much you're taking off from both sides. So if we went like 15 thousandths, So that's 350. When I get down to 330, it's 20 thousandths. So that means about 10 thousandths on here. So that's it. Right about there. Yeah, 3.30. So up until now, I was going to cut this down to a quarter inch diameter or 5 sixteenths. No. 218, 0.218, 0.22. And then put the taper on the inside. But I think I'm going to drill the eighth inch hole on this side, drill the eighth inch hole on this side, then start my taper this way. And for a taper, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to spin this around and get this angle to be approximately what I want, just, just uh, dive into it a little. Um, I could set this up, figure the angle, you know, how many thousandths over an inch, but I'm going to eyeball that because it's not too critical. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill a... little under an eighth inch hole. 
and see where we stand. Well, I start with a 32, which is 109. No, oh, I might have to do a center punch, center hole, center drill. I'm at three quarters right now on this, just flush on the back. So if I go to one inch, that'll be my quarter inch deep, I guess you'd say. to use the undamaged end we'll try Two numbers down at a 30. That's not too bad. A little loose, but that's okay. I think I want it a little loose, at least for now. So that should help support it. Now, quarter of an inch. <laughs> I have to scribe a quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's about right. Right there, which would make sense.
Well, number one, let's see if we can get that in there all the way. Yeah, we're not going to hit anything. Well, let's see what this does for angle. Make that angle a little bit steeper. Well, I think that looks pretty good. Now, I think I'm going to have to use a cutoff tool to uh, get that down, that neck down behind it. Let's see if I can't bring that in a little. That's sticking way out there. Too low. Well, I think that'll be close enough to square. I'm going to clear everything. Oh, a quarter of an inch, two five five. I got to get down to two two. That's not a lot. say two two
Yeah, just under 2-2. Two, two. All right, now... Yeah. I didn't leave enough room to cut off. I could use a hacksaw and get in there a little bit, but I think I'm just going to... Take my time and run this down. A little too low. But not by much. Here we have it. Got to clean this little bit up. I would just file it. All right, we'll see how that goes. All right, I cheated a little bit. I actually test fit it before I brought you guys over. So now the question is, if I put this all in, Well, it looks like it goes up and down. Let's put the spring on. And then finally, the air fitting. All right, so now, yeah, it's still recording. Now I'm going to put all this together. I was I kept it all pretty much the way it was supposed to be and this pin goes into that hole so I think I'm all set there that looks good Well, I'm pretty sure you came out of there.
So this is what's left of that piece. Looks like it was leather or rubber. Whatever it is, it's crisp. Well, it feels good, whether or not it works. Let's uh, go out and fire up the compressor. Well, as my uncle used to say a lot, probably not an original, but the operation was a success, but the patient died. Um, I Put a new valve in here, and it is leaking. But not all the time. Well, it's pretty light. I can live with that. I expected that. It doesn't have any other neoprene ring in it or anything. It's just a brass pin. But when I put it all back together, it was frozen up solid. And I pulled it apart, put it back together a dozen times, and I even took the other two apart that I have. They're one, well, I think they're both Chicago pneumatics, but they're a slightly different design. So it didn't help me totally, but it made me realize that someone had taken this apart because the other ones are filthy. This one is immaculate inside. So I'm thinking this one was never run after somebody cleaned it and tried to fix it. Um, this had a problem with the valve, but I think when they took it apart, they lost a spacer in the, the nose of it, and they put another one in, but it was too thick, and it just bound everything up. So now, so now it works, and It works fine, and if I crank in my <coughs> throttle adjustment here, <coughs> that works fine as well. So I'm going to say, ultimately this worked out, but it was a lot more effort than I thought. And now that I've taken the other two partially apart and seen how filthy they are inside, and they were working, I'm going to clean those. That'll not be on display anywhere. But I just thought I'd show you the end result. It works fine. So um, that actually was a one day, one, huh, one session project, which is unusual. So thanks for watching. Um, yes, the part in here is unobtainium. All the parts, I went and looked this gun up and there isn't a single part that I can find <laughs> to repair this. So, uh, yep, unobtainium strikes again. I had to manufacture my own and that was fun. So, let me know what you think. Comment, likes, dislikes, share, subscribe, however it goes. Um, I'm just happy uh, if you watched it to the end. And uh, perhaps we'll get back on my trailer over here in the next video. So have a good afternoon.